and Bob Crippen is about to begin the auxiliary power unit water boiler pre-activation. At the present time, everything going along very smoothly in our countdown. The count presently stands at T-minus 40 minutes, 23 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 35 minutes and counting. At the present time, the closeout crew is finishing up the various preparations necessary on the orbiter access arm. They have just swung away uh, the portion of that arm which provides the seal between the very clean room atmosphere of the white room uh, and the orbiter. It has a uh, sort of an inflatable seal that uh, presses against the orbiter just slightly to ensure that uh, we not get any uh, undue amount of, uh, of dirt or contamination uh, from wind blowing things up there uh, in the white room. We try to maintain the integrity of that because that is the area that people pass through into the vehicle. At the present time, everything going very smoothly. Well, we're waiting for verification that the cabin uh, vent was satisfactory, the pressurization was satisfactory, then Commander John Young was asked to prevent the cabin vent. At this time he opens the vents and allows the pressure to uh, leak out uh, at a predetermined rate. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation that the landing sites are prepared and ready for the launch and expect that they are. Uh, the S-band telemetry system uh, has been switched to high power and the Myla tracking site, that's the tracking site on Merritt Island, is adjusting their uplink command signals to the proper level. The ground launch sequencer mainline computer programs are in the process of being activated. At the present time, everything going smoothly. We're looking for a launch on time at 7 a.m. this morning. The countdown stands at T-minus 33 minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 21 minutes, 42 seconds, and counting. Uh, we're presently preparing to enter the planned 20-minute hold at the T-minus 20-minute point in the countdown. The astronaut John Young has just been asked to uh, close the cabin vents and they will repressurize the cabin at that time. The primary computer data is being transferred to the backup computer in order for both of them to have the same date. In case of a primary computer system failure, the backup computer will take over command of the shuttle during the launch period. During this 20-minute uh, hold period, there are a number of things which uh, must be done. One of them will be to reset the clock, the countdown clock, and so you will see a movement of that of approximately 51 seconds in order to bring us out at a liftoff at exactly 7 a.m. this morning. We're coming up on that uh, particular hold at this time, about 39 seconds away from it. The weather aircraft uh, will be active at this time. We have a number of aircraft which will be in the air. They include weather aircraft and also chase planes. The, the chase planes will not take off until later at the T-minus nine minute hold period. Uh, with the final plane being launched at T-minus five minutes with a very, very tight uh, constraint there. Coming up on the hold, T-minus 20 minutes and holding.
This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 20 minutes and holding approximately one minute and a half before coming out of that built-in hold. The NASA test conductor has conducted a check of the major managers responsible for tonight's launch and determined that they are ready to support the launch as are astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen. The orbiter test conductor, the booster test conductor, external test tank test conductor, uh, range safety officer, safety, and other uh, engineers. The uh, NASA test conductor has ordered the countdown to resume, and we will be resuming in just about 52 seconds from now. Going down to a liftoff on time at 7 a.m., we have no weather problems here or at the primary landing sites. Everything continuing to go smoothly. We will count down from this point to the T-minus nine-minute point in the countdown. And at that point, we will hold again for uh, 10 minutes. One of the main things that will happen first in that uh, hold will be the uh, movement of the Gox vent arm or beanie cap back from the external tank. Uh, just a few seconds away, about 15 seconds away from picking up the countdown at the T-minus 20-minute point in the count. About five seconds. And we're at T-minus 20 minutes and counting. A purge of the fuel cells, which provide both electricity for the orbiter and drinking water for the crew, is being performed. At this point, the computer has changed to a program known as Major Mode 101, which is the terminal countdown configuration. At this point, the primary computer is can compared with the proper onboard computer to ensure that they are ready for launch. The NASA convoy conductor has verified that the landing convoy at the KSC shuttle landing facility is ready. Uh, in case of a return to launch site abort, the landing would be on runway 15. All of the other launch sites also have confirmed that they are ready to go. Just prior to coming out of the hold, we received verification that the pre-flight alignment of the inertial measurement unit, uh, u unit had also been completed. And so everything moving along smoothly, the countdown at T minus 18 minutes, 56 seconds, and counting, this is shuttle launch control. Okay, and we'll go to manual transition of VSS drops one. CTR when you're ready. Okay, uh, be on table, put that work. OSC, OTC. COSC. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 17 minutes and counting. Uh, we had a little cheer go up here in the control center at the Kennedy Space Center when it verified that all four of the uh, general purpose computers on board were communicating properly with the backup computer. This was one of the, the problems, this was the problem, which stopped the countdown on Friday morning when we were trying to have our first launch of the space shuttle.